How's it going guys? Chaos Prime here and we are back with another Anthem video and in this video I'm going to be going through abilities, random roles, mods and more so strap in, relax and enjoy the show. Something that threw me off initially is how Anthem unlocks its abilities. If you look at traditional RPGs or games like Destiny, Division and the like, you unlock abilities as you go along as part of the main progression. Here in Anthem, this is not the case. Instead of unlocking abilities, you unlock the actual slots for the javelin. So what about the abilities you ask? Well, that's a good question. They like everything else are part of the loot grind, meaning your abilities are earned through the random traversing of the world. It's definitely a different take on the genre and one that's got me intrigued. So each javelin will have 3 slots, 2 offensive, 1 support with around 5 items for each slot for you to use or in this case more aptly phrased go out on find seeing as they are all in the loot pool as abilities. In order to get a better understanding it's worth going over the rarity of the gear. The main rarity you're going to come across are the following, common, uncommon, rare and epic. These are what you will come across most often as you play and progress in the story campaign. These are also distinguished by colour, common and uncommon being light grey, rare being blue and epic being bluish purple. The next two tiers, mainly obtained in the higher tiers, masterworks and legendary are the final tiers you get. These again are distinguished by colours orange and purple respectively. All of these then play a part in your gear score which is used to gate you behind content much like MMOs do. The higher the rarity you get, the higher your gear score, and the higher your gear score, not only do you gain access to more content, but you also get more powerful. However, the gear score alone is not an absolute indication of your power and abilities. These are done by the inscriptions on your weapons, which now lead me on to this. Each rarity has a different number of inscriptions. Common, Uncommon has 1, Rare has 2, Epic has 3, and Masterwork and Legendary has 4. 4 inscriptions are the max you can get to and it's worth noting that there are certain inscriptions that will only be available on masterworks and legendary gear. The question remains however if you will still get common rolls on the top end gear, thus diluting the pool of random rolls that bit more. Additionally, ultra rare inscriptions will only appear on legendary gear which is essentially what you want by the time you get to your min maxing. So what does this mean for the average player? It means every one of you will have the ability to create any wacky build you see fit. The loot grind will begin, and well in games like Anthem, the loot grind itself is pretty much half the game, right? This gear rarity is important because it dictates not only your power level and gear score but also how many inscriptions you have on the said ability. Better the gear, the better the quality of the inscriptions, which is what you're looking for when you go hunting for that oh so precious loot to complete the build you're looking to create. However, sometimes RNG will not be with you. Sometimes it may hate you. It may hate you so much that you'll want to turn full Hulk and just No? None of you? At all? Must just be me then. Not that I get frustrated or anything after opening 33 damn stupid last wish chests and still not getting my damn stupid 1000 voices while others get free of them due to some dumb and stu- <coughs> As I was saying, sometimes RNG won't be by your side and for those moments you have blueprints you use to craft gear. Ben called it recipe. I think if I call it recipe, I'll find myself doing this every time I get one. I've come up with a new recipe. <laughs> so I'll call it blueprints, for my sanity's sake. Materials for those are found in the open world and are meant to be an aid for your build till you land that roll you're looking for. Due to this method of crafting, gone is the ability to re-roll. However, I would like them at some point to bring back re-roll because it does make sense, at least on masterwork gear. Maybe legendary you're gonna keep on grinding until you get the perfect roll, but masterwork gear should at least give you the ability to re-roll one ability. But that's for another day. Masterwork and Legendary gear will be the only gear that is named. These are essentially the same as lower rarity gear, just much more powerful versions. Worth noting, just because it's a Masterwork or Legendary doesn't mean it will have a Primer or Detonator attached to them. It will be entirely possible to have abilities with neither at that rarity. So do make sure when you're equipping items, you do check for this because self combos if you're playing solo will be a thing and it will help you in defeating enemies that bit quicker. Finally the last section I want to talk about is the component slot. 
This is independent of the two offensive and one support slot. The component slot houses up to 6 individual mods you can equip which are all just as powerful as your abilities. They affect the way you play in such drastic ways that they will provide a ton of customizability that I can't wait to get involved in. It's going to be fun tinkering again and breaking the very fabrics of time. Well, kinda. Probably not. But you get the gist of what I'm saying. For completion's sake, let's cover combos briefly, seeing as I did just mention them before and how important they are. These are done by way of priming a target and then detonating them with certain abilities capable of this. How do you prime a target? Well, you need an ability or a weapon that has an element that can prime. Then, when the enemy is primed, it'll have a symbol above its energy bar. With that in sight, then what you're looking for is a second ability that can detonate. It pretty much looks like an explosion on your weapon. When you use this ability, the target will take increased damage because it becomes a combo as it's detonated. This is especially important when playing solo, it's worth having one of each to take advantage of solo comboing for more damage and quicker firefights as I mentioned earlier. But what is interesting here is the fact that when you play the game, you don't unlock abilities, you don't unlock skills, you don't unlock anything, all you do is unlock the slots. Everything that you want to do and the way you want to build your javelin, it's all found in the open world. Everything from skills to grenades to weapons, everything is found in the loophole in the open world and within strongholds. Like I said earlier, this is a massively different take on the way we do things and quite honestly, this opens up the game to so much possibilities, it's scary. Because you don't have to have a grenade, you don't have to have X, Y and Z. You can pretty much build it the way you want. Yes, certain javelins will be built with a set loophole. This is obviously to keep them distinct from each other. Each javelin will have abilities that they can do that are already enshrined. That's fine. But what I'm saying here is that because you don't immediately learn grenade, you don't immediately learn X, Y, and Z, you don't immediately learn jump, for example. What happens here is you're not constrained to being forced to use a set ability. You have a pool of abilities that you can pull from. And with that said, the component section itself, the one that allows you to put six additional mods onto your suit is pretty game breaking. One of the mods allow you to reduce your cooldown by 50% while hovering. Another gives you more airtime. Another gives you 50% more damage if you defeat an enemy with your right bumper. Another increases the rate you get your ultimate back. And, and there's more. There is so much more here. And what's really interesting is how Bioware is giving us the complete freedom to just go wild. I'm assuming at some point they, they may have to put restraints in. And as we go into the world and completely break the game, because I assure you, there's going to be some mental builds out there. And when they happen, the game's going to break. It's going to break in such a way where you're going to be like one shot and stuff. There will have to be checks, but it's nice that they're giving us free reign to go in and just have fun and create those builds so they can see where we're going with this. All in all, this new take on creative freedom I think is great. I think the way Anthem is going is going in a positive direction and the way the random rolls work is pretty interesting. The random rolls themselves aren't the actual item itself, it's the actual additional inscriptions, and as I mentioned earlier, each rarity tier has a number of these on them, ranging from 1 to 4, with the legendary ones having ultra rare inscriptions, and these can actually be quite powerful. So for example, you could have a rare mod that reduces your grenade cooldowns by 20%, but a legendary version could reduce it by 70%. This is the difference in the type of thing that you'll be seeing. It's just more powerful. On top of this, Masterwork Gear, the top end Masterwork Gear, actually has additional skills and abilities and this applies not only to your mods but to your weapons as well. So through random rolls, abilities, this game is going to open a whole hive of possibilities and I for one cannot wait. Let me know in the comment section below what you think. Like I said this wasn't a deep dive into it but it was a overview of what you can expect. So to summarize, we have abilities. These abilities are found outside in the open world. You don't just unlock them by leveling up. You do have to go out and find the ability that's right for you. You have random rolls. Random rolls appear in the form of inscriptions that are tied to mods and weapons. 
Not only do mod components come with these, but your weapons come with these as well, so does your support abilities. Everything that you get has these. The higher your rarity, the higher your gear score. The higher your gear score, the more damage you do. And what's best about all this, when you start the game, you're a naked javelin. You don't have anything. You don't have any mods, you don't have any abilities. They'll give you the basic ones just so you can go out with something to attack with. But that's it. From the moment you leave the shores and go into the open world and start free roaming or start doing the main campaign, everything you collect will start to inscribe the way you yourself want your javelin to be. And I think this is a really good take. When you look at games like The Division, they did it really well, although they did kind of go overboard with how many perks there was and combinations. When you look at games like Destiny, it simply didn't go far enough. When you look at games like Warframe, which is probably the closest thing I can compare this to, to be fair, it gives you complete freedom to create what you want. You've got different cards in Warframe that allow you to do more damage to different factions of the enemies, increase your crit chance, speed, hacking speed, you name it, there's generally a card for it. And what's happening here in Anthem is pretty much the same thing. So hopefully, the customizability and creativity that's going to be available to us in game will be just as vast, enjoyable and fun to get to grips with. Well everyone, that's pretty much the end of the video, I hope you enjoyed it, and if you have, a thumbs up would be awesome, don't forget to subscribe, share, all that good stuff, we are well underway to 3000 subs, awesome stuff, thank you so much, until the next video, remain legend.